Lord, let's give the Lord a thank you for praise here in this house. Anybody want to take a few moments this morning and just give God some praise? Anybody know he's worthy to be praised? Can we just take a few minutes this morning and praise the God of our salvation? For he is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Anybody got a testimony this morning of God being good to you? Well, you know he's woke you up this morning. He's started you on your way. Made sure you are in your right mind. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God knows how to keep working things out for you. I'm glad how on this day for this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a good day, y'all. It's a good day. It's a good day to be here at Metropolitan. Amen. Can we just give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you're glad to be in the house on today? Amen. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad because, amen, we have... Amen. amen. We're, we're glad to be in the house today because we are, are fortunate that these young people get a chance to just take over the service today. Amen. We are, are thankful that we have young people that are capable and qualified of taking over our worship experience. So I get a chance to sit on the sidelines today. Amen, somebody. And so we're thankful today that these young people are going to lead us. And so Jamari, come on and continue to call us to worship. Amen. And then we're going to have Michael the second and Kennedy to come uh, and lead us in our invocation. And then we'll have our all of these young people, Journey, who will come and lead us in our affirmation of faith. We'll have Tarion, who will give us our welcome. And then we'll have an opening selection by these young people. Come on. Come on. Let's give it up for our young people today. Good morning, Metropolitan. Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Have a good day. Hey. All right. Amen. Come on, young people, and lead us in our, our invocation at this time. Amen. In your own way. Good morning, Metropolitan. Do you know what we have been celebrating all month? Our anniversary. And guess what? Today is you, you and young adult takeover Sunday. We are talking over. We are taking over the worship service because God is using us too. We pray that our service to God will honor God and help each of you in some way. We welcome you once, we welcome you twice, we welcome you in Jesus Christ. You're welcome, 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 amen. Good, mo good morning, Metropolitan. Please stand for the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the maker of heaven and earth, the ruler and preserver of my life. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, my Lord and Savior. I believe in the Holy Ghost, which proceeds from the Father and Son, who is the giver of life. I believe in the Holy Bible, the universal church, holy baptism, and the Lord's Supper. I believe in myself as a God of child. 
I believe that God is to be honored by the first fruits of my time, talent, substance. Therefore, I commit unto him for the work of church, my life, my ties, and my offerings. I believe in the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. Good morning, Metropolitan. I would like to greet any visitors that are here with us and those that are visiting us virtually. Thank you for celebrating our 126 church anniversary with us and we hope to see you again. Also, I would like to share that we are ordering polo shirts. For adults, it would be $30 and for children, it would be 20. You can order them downstairs by the health room or in the admin hall. Also, next Sunday is Memorial Sunday for loved ones. And Pastor Moore will go more into detail about that. Thank you. This 
is the way. way to this point. I want to now take this time as we have welcomed our visitors to welcome a special um, set of visitors in our midst. Amen. We're grateful today for those of you not only who are worshiping with us virtually and also in person. Um, we're thankful today to welcome with us, amen, the president of Lemoyne Owen College, Dr. Vernell Bennett Fair. She's here with her husband, her nephew, and also Dr. Tara Dunross, who is the Vice President of Student Affairs here with us today. Can we give them a round of applause? During this time, I think it's a great opportunity that on this particular Sunday that our young people are able to see, uh, to be able to interact with uh, a college president. Isn't that special? And so we're grateful to have her and I'd like for her if she but just take a few moments. I think she has a few words to share with us if she would come forward and uh, share with us at this time as we welcome her to Metropolitan, amen. Let's give her another round of applause. I have a video I'd like to share. Mr. Perry, if we can play that first. Imagine business and community powerhouses leaning in with mentorships and sponsorships. Imagine a world where students can participate in programs they love while obtaining their degree and promoting the institution. Imagine the Illinois College as that institution that lays the foundation for higher education and lifelong learning. Imagine a world with Olympic champions, NCAA champions, conference champions, and the Warren Born champions. Where would I be without LLC? 
Imagine a world where every student has endless possibilities to participate in a plethora of programming that shapes them holistically. Imagine a world where we have our next student athlete be NBA or WNBA All-Star. Imagine a world where students gave back to the college that gave so much to them. Imagine a world with endless resources and support systems for our students to be the best versions of themselves. Imagine a world where every student who aspired to a higher education was afforded one, and the entire campus came together to support their success. Wouldn't that be magic? The Lloyd Orange College, there's magic happening here. Thank you so much. Pastor Moore, thank you for allowing me this time to come and speak to the congregation. We've already acknowledged uh, my husband, my nephew, and Dr. Dunn Ross. I'd like to acknowledge the magicians who are in the audience at this time. How many LOC graduates do we have? One. Lemoyne and College has always had a strong relationship with the faith-based community, especially Metropolitan. It is my hope that we'll be able to strengthen and expand that association. I've decided to make my rounds in the faith community to reintroduce Lemoyne and College, and there's no better place to start than right here at Metropolitan, so thank you for having me. Lemoyne Owen College is experiencing a resurgence and we're reimagining LOC. We're strengthening and expanding our academic programs to include new certificate offerings and a, a center for entrepreneurship. We're establishing MOUs for graduate study and to create pipelines for recruitment from high schools and community colleges. We've designated more scholarship funding uh, we're competing for the types of scholars that will impact our retention and graduation rates. We're doing what I call an intention toward retention and developing support systems and designing resources to support advising, retention, and identifying students in crisis. We've designated our first program of distinction, cybersecurity. Did you know we're amongst less than six schools in the state with a cybersecurity program that is certified. And there are less than 10 HBCUs in the nation that have that designation. We've recently added an endowed chairperson to lead the sixth division, computer science and cybersecurity. We're pursuing accreditation of our music and social work programs and recently added a full-time band director position. Did you know that a marching band is a major recruiter for an HBCU? The vast majority of those students are not music majors. Student Affairs is developing systems to support the holistic wellness of our students, innovative programming, a renovated student center and cafeteria, an amphitheater, and partnerships that support career readiness are just a few examples of the magic that's happening across the street at Lemoyne Owen College. We're hoping for record enrollment this fall and are, are, are offering scholarships to any adult or traditional learner who enrolls full-time this fall. It's not too late. Guaranteed scholarships, laptop, free textbooks, and a Wi-Fi hotspot are just a few of the perks that come with enrolling at Lemoyne Owen College. Over the next few months, you'll see a total overhaul of our website because that's also a major recruitment tool. I encourage you to visit us at www.loc.edu to learn more about the great things happening at the college. If you have concerns, questions, or suggestions, I invite you to email me at president at loc.edu. 
you can call me at 901-435-1676, or I have an open door policy. You can come across the street and tell me what you think. We're interested. We can't reimagine LOC without you. Thank you for this time. And we have a, a Lemoyne College alum uh, to stand again and be recognized one more time by LOC alum in the house. Metropolitan is full of LOC alum. Let's give our president another round of applause. Amen. Good morning. Well, this is our last day for the anniversary history, and I have enjoyed it. I've learned a lot just from doing this, and I hope that you have learned a lot too. Today, we celebrate the memories of our pastors, events, congregations, and milestones in the history of Metropolitan Baptist Church. We have examined time periods in the life of this church. We know that Metropolitan was organized on the first Sunday in July, 1896. And I was wondering if we had the pictures of those pastors. <clears throat> we know that Reverend T.J. Jackson was elected pastor. He took at least 300 members from First Baptist Bill with him. William Lane came as church clerk. Deacons were Tom Branch, Gilbert Gill, James, James Shedrick, Sam Dozier, J.T. Gray, and William Lane. We know that Reverend Jackson resigned in 1902. And he also bought the Cracker Box. Now we didn't talk a lot about the Cracker Box, but it was a Cracker Box. And if you've ever seen it, you would know and wonder how 300 people fit into that one little building with those kinds of windows and so little um, air coming in and going out, but they did. Okay, Reverend Jackson resigned in 1902. We know that Reverend Cersei came. He died after serving 15 years. But while Reverend Cersei was there, he really pushed the church forward. They gained so many new members. The amount of money they were able to gather enabled them to make so much progress toward getting a bigger church and adding on to the church they had. We know, well, we didn't mention Reverend Gloucester and I went back and I felt like we should have mentioned him too, but he was a supply pastor. He was not really an elected pastor. Then Reverend Townsend came and with him, his wife, who was very gifted in music and started the choral or, or the chorale they sang all around the city and became very, very uh, famous. Then we know Reverend T.A. Moore served as supply pastor. We didn't mention him, him either, but I thought about it and I said the supply pastors were important also. Anybody who came and helped the church and worked with the church was important. Reverend T.J. Brown came. Now he came into some unrest in the church and we did mention that. Then Reverend Owen came. He had been president of Roger Williams. He was a native Tennessean. He was a Morehouse man. 
and he accepted the call in 1923. And he walked into a lot of unrest. <laughs> so it is to his credit that he was able to change the vision of the church and help people learn to work together. And I was talking to someone who had uh, actually been able to do a taping with a session of three of the older members before they died. And that person was saying, Reverend Orn came in and people weren't sitting down like we are now. They were getting up, walking around, having conversations, doing different things during the church service. I said, well, how in the world did he stop that? And he said, he told them to sit down and they sat down. <laughs> and so uh, Metropolitan, when I was a little girl, had the name for being the snooty church. Anybody remember that? Raise your hand, don't play. You know, it was the snooty church, supposedly. But they really weren't snooty, but they had a lot of trained professionals as leaders and ministers of music and people who worked in the church who wanted to change some policies and practices. And um, I remember telling somebody, I went to Metropolitan and they said, well, I can't come there. Everybody has a mink coat. I said, I don't have a mink coat. Anybody's welcome at Metropolitan. And not only that, the people who made Metropolitan what it really is, didn't have a mink coat, mink coat. They were slaves. They were children of slaves. They worked the jobs they could get. I am so proud when I see young black men and women on TV with all these different kinds of jobs <clears throat> in different areas, medicine, news anchors, uh, TV, radio, wherever, because that wasn't open to these people. But they were just as talented, just as gifted, but they were born in Jim Crow and segregation and they were not allowed. And for a black woman, you were truly not allowed. I was so happy to see the president of Lamorne on. And Lamorne on is near to the heart of Metropolitan because as you know, President Owen was associated with Owen College. In 1969, when black students started going to the University of Memphis, it hit Lemoyne really hard. So the history goes. And then there was a fire in one of the buildings at Lemoyne. I can't remember which hall it was, but they didn't really have the resources to take care of that. And Owen didn't have the resources it needed either. And so they combined and they became Lamorne Owen College. And that's something that I just discovered. Now, under Reverend Owen, they did collect enough money to start thinking about a new church. They cooked chitlin dinners or chitterling dinners. They uh, did fish fries. They sold tea tickets. Churches used to have all these teas on a Sunday. So, you know, somebody was always asking you to buy a ticket to something. But those little pennies added up. And actually, they raised $15,500 and they bought the church property in 1954. And we said that, but we didn't spend a lot of time on it. The sanctuary was completed in 1950. Now the depression came in there and it set the church back a while. And they also lost money in solid savings banks, bank. So they lost that money. But Grant Lane mortgaged his home to put that money back and give it back to the church. Reverend Orrin resigned in 1971. Then we had Dr. Loft in 1972. And it is funny how you meet people and you see people and you do not realize you'll meet them over and over again in your life if you've ever had that experience. Metropolitan used to go to Fuller Park and have their church picnic. Anybody old enough to remember that? Okay, right. We went to Fuller Park and had a church picnic every year. We would take our ice chest, 
the food on ice. I'm surprised we didn't all die of tomate, but we didn't think about that and nobody got sick. And we had our blankets and we sat there and conversed with each other. And some people swam. Now, was, I was a very young child. Don't get me mixed up. I was very young. But I remember this man, he would go up to the top of the stairs to the swimming pool and he would jump down and he'd keep doing that and splash of water. And I remembered that man. I said, Mama, why is he, he just keeps jumping in the water. She said, well, that's how he enjoys the water. You want to know who that was? It was Reverend Loft. And he was here working at Oren College at that time. And I was older when I realized that was Reverend Lofton. I look back on my high school uh, graduation and our guest speaker, our main speaker was Reverend Lofton. Again, so anyway, Reverend Lofton's uh, chief achievements, and he had so many achievements. He had a food closet, clothes closet, a deacon's fund. He traveled all over the world with the World Baptist Alliance. He went to Tokyo, Japan. And while he was there, he spoke to the troops in Japan. And he also visited the Philippines, Taiwan, Thailand, Thailand, Hong Kong, Egypt, Israel, and Lebanon. He had many publications. In 1969, he published The Quiet Place. No, he published In the Quiet Place and the title of his publication was The Secret Place. He also published a sermon called Liberated to Die and a book called When We Pray. Now, these are not all of his publications. These are the ones I included. He retired in 2001. And then Reverend Porter and Davina came. And I'm hoping that we can remember this sort of history in our timeline. Now, the unique thing about Reverend Porter and Davina was that Reverend Porter actually came as a very young child in 1949 with his mother and his brothers. But when he became pastor of Metropolitan and youth minister, and he was already uh, a part of the church. He had been here most of his life, all except for about three years. Under Reverend Porter, uh, the adopted school program uh, came up and he worked with that. And or Davina was ordained as the first ordained uh, female minister at Metropolitan. Then he went to Mount Vernon, and then in 2001, he was elected here. He, was all, he also served as president of the Southern Region. He hired Lincoln Barnett as youth pastor in 2012, and he retired December 1st, 31st, 2018. Now, I, we didn't really include uh, Reverend Barnett because he was not an elected minister, but he is a minister to us and he's done us a wonderful service. So I couldn't exclude him and feel good about myself. So I am going to tell you a little bit about him. He first came in October 16, 2012. He's a native of Blackfish Lake, Arkansas, and a resident of Hughes, Arkansas. He graduated from high school with a double major in mathematics, science, and the arts. He's a Morehouse man, and his bachelor's degree is in psychology in 2011. He graduated from the Memphis Theological Seminary in 2017. He was licensed to preach the gospel on June 14th in 2009. He, was, he became ordained for Christian ministry and metropolitan on March 15th, 2015. And his ordination council included Reverend Porter, both Reginald, Dr. Reginald and Dr. Davina, uh, Reverend Dr. Noel Hutchinson, and Reverend Linda Page. He began working at Metropolitan in 2012 after working at Lakeside Behavioral Health Center. His achievements as a youth pastor 
would be that he organized the Extra Efforts Wins program. Remember, these are for the youth. An after school program for students in K grades, uh, K through whatever. And eighth grade students from Cummings worked with Lemoyne Orange students to help tutor those students here at Metropolitan. And he served as a program director. He also worked with the South Memphis Academic Enrichment, Social Enrichment and Nutritional Program from October of 2012 to 2019. He was also director for summer enrichment camps. He also renamed the youth program to the Metro Squad. Now, I had occasion to work with the Metro Squad on occasion, and I, I love you all dearly, but when I finished, I had a new respect for him because I saw how he had such report, rapport with the students and they loved him. And at the end, when they wrote up how they felt uh, about whatever it was, the one thing they all said was that he meant so much to them and how close they felt to him. And that's very, very important for our students. When Reverend Moore came, he took on a new, a new title and he became executive pastor of ministries here at Metropolitan. But somehow I feel like he's still a little closely connected to the young people of the church who will always need that little extra effort. He has a new position. He's on the school board. Well, he's a school board member at Hughes School District from October 15, 2012 to 2015. And he has a new position in 2017. He became the Delta Regional Director for Rural Community Alliance, an Arkansas statewide-based nonprofit that advocates to support rural communities and rural school districts. In 2018, he was elected at mayor, as mayor of Hughes, Arkansas. With a 71% victory, becoming the second African-American mayor and the youngest mayor to serve the Hughes, Hughes city. He is also Delta Regional Director for RCA, Executive Pastor of Ministries for Metropolitan, as we mentioned. On the third Sunday in October of this year, it will mark his 10th year here in Metropolitan Church. Also, I wanted to go back and mention um, some of the ministries that I didn't I was trying to cut my time back last time and I cut too much. So when I went home, I said, wow, I didn't talk about this or that. But I wanna say before I do that, I can't begin to name all of the good soldiers in this church because we'd be here forever. But these are some of the ones that I can name. But I always rectify that by telling myself that Jesus knows if nobody else knows. Ministers of music, <clears throat> Ms. Willa Townsend, Ms. Lucy Campbell, Ms. Pearl Strong, William Washburn, D.L. Johnson, Brother Bonner, June Strong, Mary Jane Owen. John Whitaker, Gladys Webb, Daniel Ward, <clears throat> Robert Cooper, Bernie Wilson, Demetrius Robinson, and Daryl Brewster. Now, our musicians that we have now that we don't want to overlook our Barry Hooks on Bongo. We have Gwen Lawson 
on piano. We have Daryl Brewster on the organ, Jalen Toller on bass, <laughs> Alvin McKinney on drums and saxophone, and I have Wilson as honorary. Ben, Miss Benny Wilson, that's who's honorary. And she couldn't be with us here today. Now, someone said, you missed the minister that baptized me, so I'm going to go, I'm going to name all the associate ministers. Excuse my reading. <laughs> Reverend T.A. Moore, Reverend W.M. Matlock, Reverend Bonado, Dr. Watson, Reverend Dinkins, Reverend Parker, Daniel Peace, Charles Ryans, Adair Washington, Reginald Porter Sr., Joseph Ruffin, Samuel Peace, L. O'Brien, Isabel Flagg, Jimmy Walker, Most Pleasure, W.C. Watson, Charles Howard, and Anthony Braxton. I also need to call out the names of our past clerks. J. Thomas Turner, William Lane, S. Moody, Z.L. Bonner, Alice Webb, C.J. Neal, Georgia Atkins, and Roberta Anderson. Now, most of us can remember Ms. Atkins and Ms. Anderson, I think. And really, they did so much more than the job called for. And they meant so much to the church as a whole. And, and just as our present church clerk is working so hard, I have to thank her for putting up with me this month because I know when the phone rang, she knew it was me and I would feel guilty, but I call her anyway. And she would say, oh, hello, how are you? And, and I know that sometimes she said, oh my goodness, I got work to do. But I would have to thank her, I would have to thank Natasha Johnson. And um, as you'll see as we move along, I really need to thank uh, Rodney Jeffries in part. Oh, and I, I need to thank, um, oh my goodness, I just drew a blank. But uh, the person who works up here, she was just down here with a little girl. Jeline, thank you, senior moment, Jeline Poole. And that should not have been a senior moment because I was the same way with Jeline. And Jeline will, Jeline will always say, I'll make it work. I'll make it work. I said, but Jeline, I'll make it work. Okay, bye Jeline. And she said, I've got this. So I want to thank her too. And the organist, Miss Benny Wings, Georgia Woodruff, Tom Thomas Templeton, Gladys Webb, Thelma Wellum, Eddie Pryor Sr. And we've already mentioned Miss Benny Wilson. Now we have some lost traditions here at Metropolitan. If I go too long, can I not hit me, Reverend? We have some lost traditions here at Metropolitan. And one was the Dr. Watts. Who remembers the Dr. Watts? Okay. Most young people don't know what a Dr. Watts is. But I learned that the, the uh, tradition of the Dr. Watts actually came from England. And in early England, uh, people couldn't read very well and books were expensive. So one person would call out the words and the other person was seeing the melody. And I really simplified that, uh, but that's what it, it turned out to be. Now, when slaves came to America, we brought our music with us. Now, the slave owners really didn't like the frenzied way that the Africans were worshiping, even if they were worshiping as Christians, because we've always had lots of rhythms in our music. So to solve that problem, this is one theory. They started them with the doctor of Watts. One person would call out the uh, words and the other person, the group, would carry the whole music. And they would do that throughout the song. 
Now, if you were at Metropolitan at that time, we were still doing the Dr. Watts for years. And I can't remember who the deacon was. He was standing right, who was that? Anybody remember? Anyway, he would stand over here. It might've been different deacons. And if you got to church early enough, you did the Dr. Watts. And I think sometimes after communion, we did the Dr. Watts. Then as, then as time went on, we became more sophisticated like other black churches. And they really felt, the younger people came in and they didn't like the Dr. Watts. They felt like that was past kind of holding us back, holding on to, to traditions that we didn't need. But the people in Appalachia still do the Dr. Watts. Some of them, if you ever saw Cole Miner's daughter, when Loretta Lynn's daughter died and they were in Appalachia, anybody see that movie? Y'all don't look at the movies I look at. Okay. Okay. At her daughter's funeral, they, they did a Dr. Watts. They did the lining out of the music. And that tradition is mainly in the slave states because that's where slaves were. Another lost tradition was Lucy Campbell. Now, if you remember, she left with all the ruckus that came around uh, Reverend Owen coming here. I wish she had stayed. Well, one source says she was asked to leave. Another source says she got angry and left. But for whatever reason that she was not with them, she did so much while she was here. And a lot of her songs are still played at churches all over the United States. And she also paved the way for other African Americans to be in the music industry. She was invited to the White House by President Roosevelt, and she began working with uh, the Negro Child, Farewell, Child Conference Welfare. She fought here for equal pay for teachers and Black teachers. Now, when I was a little girl, and my mother and my aunt were teachers, and a lot of you are teachers. I was a teacher, all of us. Black people didn't get paid the same amount as being a teacher as white people did. And she lobbied against that. She even worked against that. She also knew how to be Wells. You have to put these people in their time periods. How to be Wells shares some of the same office space as she did over there at First Baptist Bill. She started working at NBC even way back then. And she paved the way for Marian Anderson and Thomas Dorsey in 1930. She also paved the way for a famous, famous uh, Memphis born singer who was Robert Bradley. And he was plucked from childhood. Nobody knew who he was. And he rose to a quartet in 1930 and he became champion of her songs. And again, I would say, just go on Google and look her up. I can't stand here and name all of the songs that she composed, but she's composed a lot. Um, and I'll skip on over to the end of this, but she's also featured at the Southern Folk Folk Folklore Center here in Memphis, and you can visit that if you would like to. Okay, now I will get to the real interesting part. Hmm. What? Excuse me. Okay, next week, we will look at Dr. Moore, Dr. Michael Moore, and Dr. Christie, and that way they'll have their own platform, and uh, that might be better. So thank you.
yo, we have such a rich history. Um, I, and I don't want Dr. Hodge to feel rushed. Um, and so I said, you know, we can continue to go and we can have uh, Sunday installments for as long as we need to, but uh, we wanted to um, uh, allow for these young people to continue to lead us. And thank you, Dr. Hodge, for being so thorough. Can we give her another round of applause? I I'm grateful because of our technology upgrades, we're able to capture uh, this information uh, as we record it and record our services. And we're able to utilize this information for new members or persons uh, to be able to preserve it for the future. And so it's important for us to get as much of our history out as possible uh, and also make sure that we're uh, mindful of our attention span, amen. But we are so grateful today uh, for the ability to hear that. Can we give another round of applause? It's prayer time. It's prayer and time. We know that it's very important for us to go to God in prayer. We know that prayer not only changes things, but prayer changes us. And so we're getting ready to pray now. We're getting ready to go to God in prayer. And as we get ready to go to God, I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes today to take a moment and let the Lord know what things may be on your heart and on your mind as we get ready to approach the throne of grace. Tori Hammonds is coming forward as she will lead us in prayer. And we're thankful today that the Lord still hears and answers prayers. Tori, come on forward as we're getting ready to go to God. We're getting ready to pray. We're getting ready to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He'll hear our faithful cry and answer by and by. Let us bow as we go to God. Good morning, Metropolitan. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, on this Sabbath day, I want to thank you for blessing our church to celebrate 126 years of preaching the gospel and spreading the good news and Jesus and his love. Lord, we are so grateful that during the most difficult times in the life of the church, it, it was because of your grace and mercy that sustained us through many years of trials and tribulations. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for 126 years of your sustaining power. Lord, thank you for calling visionary leaders to serve at Metropolitan, who have come to you to be a beacon of hope and a refuge of for people throughout the community and beyond as the children of the church provide leadership and use their spiritual gifts to glorify God during this worship to service today. I am so grateful for yet another opportunity to pray. Finally, Lord, as the church begins its 127 years anniversary, we ask those who love the Lord to keep the faith and march boldly into the year one year 120 2023 with gratefulness and let our joy be known we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upwards to zion the beautiful city of God bless and keep you. Amen, amen, and amen.
over with gifted young people. Uh, Metropolitan is in good hands. Even in the pandemic where people are scattered virtually, we are grateful today that the Lord is still in the blessing business. Let me introduce this young man to you. He is a son of our church. And I decided today that he told you he'd share some words of expression and we decided, no, he would bring the message for the day. This young man is Jalen Toller. Let me read for you his bio. His bio. Raised right here in Memphis, Tennessee, and a part of our family, many of us have seen Jalen grow into the amazing young man that stands before us today. After graduating from the Soulsdale Charter School in May 2021, Jalen received a full scholarship to Berkeley College of Music in Boston, where he will begin his sophomore year this fall. While at Soulsdale Chartered School, just right around the corner, Jalen had the opportunity to work with Grammy, Grammy winner Justin Timberlake. Jalen was also on the Ellen Show, and Jalen's time at the Soulsdale Charter School has allowed him the opportunity to work with and collaborate with many artists. Jalen continues to follow God to take his music talents to higher heights while off at college. Jalen has produced songs for five Boston artists while studying and maintaining a 3.5 GPA in engineering and sound design. He has had the honor of playing for multiple artists such as Robert Glasper, Music Soul Child, and Layla Hathaway. Jalen exemplifies what we believe here in Metropolitan. Extra effort wins. We're honored today to have Jalen Toller as our special speaker for our 126th anniversary youth takeover service. His family is here. I want his mother to stand, be recognized. We love him dearly. And after this next selection, we will hear from that and another than one of our very own, Brother Jalen Tola. Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, keep it up for uh are you fired? Please. Stand up. Stand up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. How y'all doing today? Good? Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh good morning to Dr. Moore, Mr. Lincoln, all of our visitors, and my wonderful, wonderful metropolitan family. I'm so glad to be here on this hot but beautiful Sunday, especially during our church 126 year anniversary. Can you get a round of applause for that? Thank you. I was chosen by our pastor to give the word to y'all. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I thought this was gonna be a little bit difficult considering the fact that I'm not really good at public speaking or keeping an audience that's engaged for certain amount of time, like our pastors do. Um, but I have a quote that I've lived by to, the, to this day, but to this day. Uh, that quote is, when words fail, music speaks. Let me say that again. When words fail, music speaks. Um, meaning that I let all, all my music, whether I'm playing an instrument, writing lyrics, making a beat, composing, et cetera. Um, I let the music speak for me and get my point across. Um, as y'all know, music is my passion, my love, my everything. It's gotten me to the point where I hear musical notes everywhere, like everywhere. Uh, it's to the point where I can tell what note you burp or what note you scream or the car horn that you blow. Like, I can tell that. Um, um, I just love music so much. God has been so good to me and has blessed me with these gifts. Thus being said, today's message is gonna be very, very, very different. Very different. Because today, my metropolitan family, I'm going to be, I'm going to be turning this beloved sanctuary that we all know and love to a, I'm scared to say this. I'm turning this sanctuary into a studio a studio because 
Sure be right. I'm turning this sanctuary into a studio because today we as a family are going to make a song together. Is that, is that okay with y'all? We got a song together? Okay, cool. Um, all you need is two things, your Bible and rhythm. I'm looking at the crowd right now. It's just all black folks. So I feel like y'all have rhythm. Don't. Don't prove me wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, um, before I begin, I just wanted to, I wanted to make known that although I'm gonna be making a song for y'all and sharing it with all of you, uh, the goal is not to please everyone in this room. Um, it's not. Um, the goal here is to make a beautiful song for the one and only Jesus Christ Himself. So, that being said, let's begin. So what makes a song? A song. Um, I feel like every song has four main ingredients. So you have harmony. Everyone say harmony with me. Harmony. You have your pulse. Pulse. Mm -hmm. You have your lyrics. Lyrics. And then finally, this is a big word, ornamentation. Can we say that? Or it's an ornamentation. Thank you. Um, and get this. Each of those four elements are related to are related to our relationship with God, believe it or not. Let me explain. So the first category, like I said, is harmony. Harmony is, a, uh, the definition of harmony is a combination of simultaneously sounding musical instruments to produce chords and chord progressions to have a pleasing effect. Keyword, pleasing. Let me say it again. Harmony, the combination of simultaneously sounding musical notes to produce chords and core progression to having a pleasing effect. The key word there is pleasing. Pleasing in the sense of music to our ears and also pleasing our Lord. In, this, in the kingdom of God, everyone looks different, sounds different, etc. And God has blessed everyone with gifts, believe it or not. Um, um, of some gifts are subtle, like a bass line, or some, some are dynamic, like a keyboard. Um, we use our gifts to please the Lord because that's the deal. He saved us for our sins. He loves us and he blesses us. And in return, we, give, we use our gifts to show how much we are grateful for him. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful as, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was reading about this. All right, so like I said earlier, um, y'all have your Bibles out. Um, I want y'all to turn to First Peter, chapter four, verse ten. Um, uh, First Peter, chapter four, verse ten. Y'all ready? All right, it says, each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God and Christ in our various forms, right? So that being said, let's begin. Uh, like I said before, um, harmony. So for harmony, um, when I'm typically making music, um, I, just, I like pretty things. And since we're making a song about God, I want to include something that's pretty, right? Oh, you're good, you're good. So, Um, like I said, um, harmony is like very pleasing to the ears, right? So let me ask you a question. Which one sounds pleasing? The first one? First chord? Did everyone hear that? How does that sound to you? Nice? All right. All right. What about this? Sounds bad, right? Sounds bad. You don't want that in a song, right? So in my head, um, for this song, I wanted make the song for Jesus. So I want this to be pretty, right? So we're gonna 
construct a song, just two chords. So let's just do it. So the first, the first chord, C sharp major, and it goes to C minor. I'm gonna play it, right? So like I said earlier, we're gonna be turning this sanctuary into a studio. So I'm gonna be recording this live to, for act, to make an actual song. My buddy Winston up there is gonna help me. So yeah, so you ready? Take it higher. That sounds so nice. Back down. got that down. Thank you, by the way. Um, we just started our song. Um, sounds pretty. Um, I want like further than more. Um, so yeah, that's the concept of harvest. Our next topic. So we got that down. My buddy Winston over here. Uh, you got that down on the track? You got it? Cool. cool. Right. Again, this is going to be like a little studio session with all Okay, next category I talked about is pulse. Again, so pulse, the definition of pulse is a steady, regular beat that continues throughout a song. You can think of it as like a heartbeat. Everyone has a heart. It's the heartbeat of the music. The beat of the pulse are always the same length, just like your heartbeat. The pulse is what allows you to play together in time and makes music. Thus being said, pulse, equals heartbeat. Heartbeat from the heart, heart equals love. Love. Love should run through us like the blood in our hearts and in a system to keep us alive. The same way how the beat of the drum runs through the entire song to keep one, to keep the song alive, and two, to bring foundation and groove to the listener, right? So I want to engage with y'all real quick. Like I said earlier, y'all have rhythm, right? right? So I'm gonna give a tempo. And all I want y'all to do is just snap on a two and four. Can I say two and four? Okay, ready? One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four, last time, one, two, three, four. Thank you, thank you. So y'all have y'all Bibles out? Uh, turn to Ephesians chapter five, verse 19. I'm sorry, it's a lot of moving going on today. Like, I wanted to get us engaged, so no. Y'all there? Uh, Ephesians chapter five, verse 19. You ready? Right. It says, singing and making a melody to the Lord with your heart is to aim and about him and that we sing. Singing has such a unique way to, of bringing your heart, soul, and mind and strength together to focus entirely and completely on God. Thank you. Um, that being said, talking about pulse, pulse is like a drum beat. Let's add some drums to the song, right? this song to be kind of groovy a little bit. 
Ready, one, two. Ah. Huh. Thank you, thank you. So, I just recorded that drum part. I don't know how it sounds, I was a little iffy. Uh, Wentz is gonna work his magic. Let me know, um, can you actually, can you play it back real quick? Big time, big time. Drums. Got all the drums that the recording. Like, can you play it real quick? Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Sound nice. My boy working his magic up there. Okay, okay. Ooh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> next thing we have, or the next topic we have is ornamentation. So the definition of ornamentation in music is the embellishment of a melody, either by adding notes or modifying the rhythm. In European music, ornamentation is added to already or add it to already complete comp the composition in order to make it more pleasing. It's adding extra stuff basically. Right? So ornamentation is simply out of that whole uh, definition I just gave, ornamentation basically means being extra, right? Being extra, 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 extra effort. Putting that extra effort, extra effort wins, right? <laughs> Going that extra, um, going the extra mile for God pays off for the long run. If God is able to do what He did on that cross, we can go the extra mile to praise Him, adding that extra flavor. Oh, thank you. Adding that extra, adding that extra flavor to a song makes it better, right? In case, in this case, percussion is gonna be the extra. So we're gonna add percussion to the song to make it more extra pleasing, to make it more groovy. And so in this section, I'm gonna have some volunteers from the audience to come help me out make this, right? So without further ado, so. So right here, we have bongos, cowbells, tambourine, tambourine, tambourine. Now I know one lady in this church, when it comes to singing, she gonna grab that tambourine. I'm looking dead at you, you know I'm talking to you, right? Miss Sherry, can you come up here, please? How you doing? Okay, so all I want you to do is to shake your tambourine. That tempo, right? You just, I just asked y'all. I just, okay, do that then. You're supposed to help me, man. Okay, one, two, ready, go. So he can record it.
Thank you. Give it up for Materi. Thank you. Okay, we got tambourine down. So now I want some other stuff. Hmm. Um, let's see, let's see. Where's Mike Mike at? Mike Mike, you there? Downstairs? Ah, oh, that's my friend, man. That's my, my boy. Um, hmm. Mama, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Come on, come on. I want this to be engaging for everybody in this room. My mom also just graduated from Lamorne on college. Oh. Follow me this way. Can I get a stick? Can I get a stick real quick? A stick, a stick. one stick, thank you. So, mom. I want you to stand right here. Let's tell about this. All I want you to do is that when I hit, when I say four, that's when you hit it, right? Just hit, hit. All right. One, two, three, four. Hey, one, two, three. Hey, one, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Yes, sir. That's my mama. She plays, she do this, she do this. I love you. All right. Okay, we got tambourine, we got cowbell. What else can we add? What else? Two bongos. Other than that, hmm. My boy Barry. Come here, man. I need you real quick. Hey, get up for Barry, a percussion player. All I'm gonna do is show you, right? Um, so all you're gonna do is, how you doing? Add, 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 a, add a little flavor to it too, right? All right, you ready, Winter? Recording? All right, one, two, ready, go. Boom, boom, pop. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Right. Oh, stop that. We're going to redo that again. Redo that again. So it's. Oh. Start recording now. Wait, well, okay. One, two, ready, go. Yeah. One time. All right, good. Thank you, man. Give it up for Barry. So, so we got our percussion. Um, we got our bongos and whatnot. Uh, one more, one more. Uh, you have the shaker financial. Let me get someone. Dr. Moore, how you doing? How you doing? All I want you to do, go, hold the mic. How you doing? How you doing? You ready, Winter? Come on now, hold on, hold on, hold on. You you get a click. Stop. Okay, Again, so, uh, start it. Think. Um, one, two, three. Ready, go. There it is. One, two, three, stop. Thank you. Give it up for 
Dr. Moore, thank you. All right. So we got a shaker, we got some cowbells, we got some bongos in there, we got some tambourine. It's good. All right. Um, next thing. I want to, this is where everyone comes in. Everybody, everybody. No matter how young, old, everybody. So remember how I told you to uh, snap on two and four? So we're gonna do that again, right? I'm gonna play the, I'm gonna play the drum. All y'all doing is snapping on two and four. And keep in mind, Winton is recording. And so we're putting this into the song, right? So, okay. Thank you. That sounds good. That sounds good. All right. So we got that down. So we really got everything down. Oh, I forgot. Most important thing, the thing that I love most. Bass. We need bass. We need bass. We need bass. Can you hear me real quick? Ready, Wednesday? Got it? Got it. Cool. So we got all those things. We got chords, we got the harmony, we got our percussion, we got our beat, we got our bass line. We really got everything except one more thing. One more thing. And that is the last topic, which is lyrics. The definition of lyrics is literally the words in the song. This is the last one. Um, lyrics are basically the message. When you're singing or rapping in a song, you're telling a message to the listeners. Just how God sends us messages through various ways in different situations and circumstances. In a way, the lyric helps us teach, the lyrics help, helps us and teaches, like gives us the moral. Um, can y'all turn y'all Bibles to Galatians chapter 3, verse 16? Oh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, let the message of Jesus, of Jesus Christ dwell among you richly as you would teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through songs, hymns, and, and songs of the spirit singing to God with gratitude in our hearts, right? So that being said, we need lyrics to the song, the song we just made. Um, I'm just gonna keep it simple, just keep it sweet. So the song, I'm thinking that the title should be Jesus is the one, right? And so, with that being said, I need someone to help me sing. 
That's when we all come in. You all stand up, please. Free, please. Thank you. Right? Uh, excuse me for my bad singing, but all y'all gonna sing, all y'all gonna sing is Jesus, you are the one, you are the one, you are the one. So it's like this. One, two, three, one. Je mm, sorry, sorry. Jesus, mm -mm. you are the one, you are the one, you are the one, Jesus. Mm -mm. You are the one. You are the one. Can you guys say it? Go. Mm -hmm. You are the one. Yeah. You are the one. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You are the one. You are. Can you guys sing it? You are the one. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You are the one. You are the one. You are the one. Jesus. Dun, dun. You are the one. I sound great. You are the one. You are the one. Good job. You just know the round of applause. Sound great. So, so taking everything I just recorded for our song. Well, everything for everything. This is the end, right? Go ahead and unmute everything and let everyone hear what we just made. And so before we start. But before we start, I want everyone to sing what we just played, right? Okay, cool. Start it. See how it sounds. From the top. Whoa, Whoa that sounds nice. Oh. Can I have y'all snap for me? Snap, yeah, snap. Snap, snap, keep going. Snap, snap, play everything. Snap, snap. Hold on. Make sure you the loop is on. The loop is on. The loop. There you go. Snap, 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 snap. Y'all think. One. Ready, go. Jesus, you are the one. You are the one. You are the one. Jesus, nothing wrong. You are the one. You are the one. You are the one. Jesus, you hear that tambourine, Jay? That's you. That's you. Come on. Feel the groove. Feel the groove. You are the one. Thank y'all. Um, keep playing, keep, keep playing, keep playing. Simmer it down a little bit. I just want to say thank you so much to every single person that's in this audience for giving me the talent to show my talent and to create a song with you guys for Jesus Christ himself. Literally, music is everything to me. It brings everyone together. Everyone is like vibing, dancing. It's so peaceful. And we're in a time right now, we're going through some tough times right now where we have a lot of stuff going on with uh, the office and killings and racism and everything. I find that music brings us together. And I just want to say thank you to each person to give me this outlet. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Moore, Mr. Lincoln, my family, everybody. Thank you. Can you run it back one more time? One more time? Shut up a little bit. Can I have y'all snap? Rock. Just rock. Let's see. Jesus, you are the one. You are the one. You are the one. Jesus. That sounds so good. You are the one. You are the one. Come on, again. Jesus, you are the one. You are the one. You are last time. Jesus, you are the one. You are the one. You are the one. Thank you.
make some noise up in this place. Something so transformational. You all were like, wow. I think, is this the first time in church history we made a song mid worship? <laughs> Come on, y'all give Jalen another round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I, I am just godly proud, amen. To, I mean, you 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 just never know the the level of gifting that's in our midst. That's the blessing of being here at Metropolitan. Just so many gifted people here in this place, and we're just so thankful, amen. For Jalen, amen. Can we just give him another round of applause? Oh. Now, I remember um, our conversation preparing for this Sunday, and I told him, I said, you know, I'm, I'm not going to preach Sunday, Jalen. It's you, you, you are, are the one who's going to bring the message for the day. And he said, really? You know, he seemed a little nervous. And, oh, definitely. Most did. <laughs> but it was good because we said we were going to get out the way. And we're thankful today for we see the fruit of what happens when you let your young people take charge. There's a word in that. You see the fruit of what happens when we let our young people lead. We know our church is in good hands. The doors of the church are now open today. There may be somebody who's gathered here in this place who came to come realize that Jesus is the one. Amen. And the one that they need in their lives to help to strengthen them along the way. That Jesus is the one that they need to carry them throughout their highs and their lows. Jesus is the one that they need to be able to help them in times of challenge and difficulty. Y'all, we got a new favorite song. Y'all know we're going to have to finish recording that now. You know, we don't have to do that. That that sounds like a chart topper right there. But the doors of the church are now open because there's somebody out there today who needs a church home. Somebody out there today who needs to come in closer contact with this Jesus who we know is the one. The one who gave his life for us. The one who hung on an old rugged cross. The one who got up with all power in his hands. Jesus, who is the one. There may be somebody gathered here in this place that needs a closer relationship with the Lord, and that's you, I invite you to come. I invite you to come. This is a great place to be because we believe in extra effort when Gracious and all wise God, we thank you today. Thank you for the display of gifts, God, and the messages that we literally have seen in the music. Oh God, we thank you for the inspiration, of God, of this young man, Jalen, and how he was used as a vessel to bring us all together, create a pulse, to help us with harmony. God, to give us lyrics that will help us to sing a new song. And God, to Allow us to produce something that, Lord, we pray that is pleasing in your ears. Oh, God, this is the good news, that we're able to sing in such a way, oh, God, that, Lord, we let you know that we convey our love to you. And so, Lord, we pray now in this place, God, that this young man, you would cover him and keep him. We know the enemy is not happy today because, God, you've placed something special in him that he's willing to use for your glory. So, God, we know he is going back to school in a few weeks. But, God, we know we want him to be sent back to school 
with love, with grace, with peace and blessings. And so now, God, we speak life over him, oh God, and ask that you would just continue to allow angels to encompass him. Have your way now, oh God. We thank you for those who've been blessed by just being here in this place. We thank you for the young people who've seen someone who looks like them making magic happen in the sanctuary. We thank you, oh God, for revolutionary ministry that allows for us to do things differently right here in this historic sanctuary. But that's, God, what we've always done. God, we've always been on the cutting edge. That's how we know that extra effort wins, God, because we have always been committed to training and informing, God, disciples to serve in the present age. And so now, God, we know that you have work for us to do, but we thank you for equipping us to do it. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. All the saints of God said amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Are y'all glad y'all came to church today? I'm glad I came to church today. Amen. It's now offering time as we get ready now to give. We give here in, in three ways at Metropolitan. In three ways. First of all, we give in a way that is prayerful. But we ask God to guide us in our giving. Because the Lord knows what we have and the Lord knows what's on the way. Yes, the Lord knows what we have and the Lord knows what's on the way. We give in a way that's generous because we model God-like behavior and we want our gifts to be pleasing in the Lord's sight. And then we also give in a way that is joyful where we get excited about our gifts. We get excited about our sacrifices, not only because we see what the Lord is doing and helping us to build the kingdom, but we also get excited about how the Lord will bless us for our faithfulness. So if that's you today, you want to continue to contribute to the work of the church as our ushers come forward. Not only can you give right here as our ushers make our way throughout the, the sanctuary, but for those of us worshiping virtually or here in person, you can drop your gifts off here at our church located at 767 Walker Avenue each and every Monday morning between 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. You can also send your gifts securely to our P.O. Box, P.O. Box 262, Memphis, Tennessee, 38101. You can either scan that QR code or go to our website, www.extraeffortwins.org. And in just a few simple clicks, you can either give through PayPal or Givelify, whatever ways you support the work of ministry. We thank you for putting forth extra effort. And with that being said, at this time, let us bow and bless our offering. Oh God, how we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. Lord, we thank you for empowering us during this time to give back to you. So now, God, we pray that our gifts will be pleasing in your sight. And so, Lord, move us from where we are to where we need to be. God, we don't just pray for those who have to give or even desire to give. We pray for all of us collectively that, God, we would become the people that you desire for us to be. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Come on, young people. Can we get some more uh, giving music? How y'all feel? Y'all not tired yet, are you? All right, let's keep the show. Here you go. Let's, let's keep it going. We got to get everybody involved, right? I think we know that. You, come on, church. Blessings and glory. And honor. And honor. They all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Come on, from the top. Let's say it again. Come on, church. I just want to pray. Forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. For all. For all. You've done. You've done. For me. Anybody had the Lord do something for you? Blessing. Blessing and, glory. and honor. And honor. They all. They all. I wish we could have church up in this place.
Hasn't he done something for you this morning? Anybody can testify that the Lord has done something for you. They all belong. Oh, I wish I had somebody to help me. Praise the Lord today. Thank you. Anybody just willing to say thank you? One more time. Can we praise him this morning? That's what I'm talking about, Metropolitan. For all. That's for looking after me last night. That's for waking me up this morning. That's for starting me on my way. And honor. Oh, it all belongs to you. Let's thank you. Last time, come on. Can we praise him one last time? For all, think about all the Lord has done for you. praise. Anybody here in the house today just want to take a moment and praise the Lord for being good to you? Anybody just can look back over your life and say, God, I thank you for being so good to me. God, I praise you for the ways you've made for me. God, I'm thankful today for being a God who knows how to work things out. Amen. Anybody just happy to be here in the house on today? Amen. With that being said, let's stand then for our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings. Oh, I feel something happening in the atmosphere. Before we go into that real quick, y'all have to pay attention to the power of the doxology. There's power in the doxology. After we give, we say, praise God from whom all blessings. My, my, my. So when I think about the breath in my lungs, that comes from God. When I think about the blood running warm in my veins, that comes from God. When I think about the food on my table, that comes from God. When I think about the clothes on my back, that comes from God. When I get in my car to come to church, that comes from God. When I think about the job that I have, that comes from God. When I think about the roof over my head, that comes from God. And so our doxology suggests that we acknowledge the source of all that we have. And as we get back to God, we say, praise God. Praise God. Not just us, but we get other folk involved. We say, praise him, all creatures here below. But that, that's, that's not just it. He said, praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. They say, really, all of heaven and earth should be praising God for being the source of our blessings. Don't y'all miss that. Amen. And so can we sing our doxology like we mean it today? Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's, let's go ahead and move forward with our doxology at this time. Let's go ahead and praise the name of our Lord as you are seated here in this place. I am God was happy and excited to have a few announcements to share with you. To our visitors and friends who are here with us, we're thankful today. Yeah, we, we gotta apologize for Malachi for not being here today. You know why? 
because we had a good time here in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I, I don't know about y'all. I, I had to be mindful, and I was telling Dr. Hodge this. I had to be mindful not to be selfish about the history because every time she opens her mouth to talk about the history, she speaks about this great place. Amen. This is a great place where one of the few places where Dr. Martin Luther King was able to come and speak here in Memphis. Amen. One of the few places where we have so many people who have made an impact. And, you know, we have people like, you know, that I read about in seminary who came here to lecture. We have people who even in our membership have made a difference all throughout, not just this city, but through this nation. And we are grateful today, and we are not ashamed of that. Amen. And in order for us to continue that legacy, we have to be reminded of who we are. Amen. In order to know where we're going. And so we're so excited about what God has done. And as you can see by our youth taking over today, we are in good hands. Am I right about it? Amen. I'm so I'm so glad to our our and I'm thankful for uh, Dr. Danell Benefares for being here today. Amen and sharing with us. Amen. I'm so excited about the partnership between Amen Lemoyne Owen College and Metropolitan. Amen. We have a world of resources to offer those students. Amen. And we are just so excited to pour into them. Amen. We're looking forward to uh, having chapel regularly here at our church for the entire campus starting in the fall. And we're looking forward to that. Amen. Hosting them right here in our sanctuary as we build, amen, the spiritual resources for students in this community. I want to tell you all, I'm just so excited, even as we continue in this 126th church anniversary celebration. Next Sunday, we are fortunate and blessed, amen, to have our Progressive National Baptist Convention National President, Dr. David Peoples, who will be with us bringing the word on next week to close out our celebration. Amen. We know that he was scheduled to be with us on our official anniversary Sunday, and he had uh, um, an emergency outpatient eye surgery, but he's been cleared to come and preach, and he reached out to us wanting to be a part of this special celebration, recognizing how important our church has been to the convention, amen, to uh, just wanting, and also to his life, and he's looking forward to coming in and sharing with us, amen. Now, he's flying in and flying right back out. He's flying in on Sunday morning and flying right back out, so we're praying for traveling mercies for him, y'all. Amen, somebody, amen, and I'm thankful to our pastor, Mary amen, who graciously deferred, amen, and allowing for our, our national president to come and share with us, and we're looking forward to that time, amen. Aren't you looking forward to that time? Amen. Now, next Sunday is our Memorial Sunday, which means we also uh, take the time to remember those who have gone on before us, and so we are uh, giving gifts in memory of those who have come before us, and so we'll come at the end of our service, and we'll share, um, we'll share reflections, and we want to, uh, just like last year, uh, we came before church and shared our brief reflections of those who have made an impact on our lives, and so you have these forms here for you that let, that allow for you to inform the church one of that person's name, because we give every single person who submits one of these cards, amen, and a gift, we give them a, a proclamation, amen, to keep, amen, as a keepsake that you can hang up and keep with you in your homes, amen, to show that you remember this, these special persons or this uh, particular person um, during this anniversary celebration, amen. We will keep a copy of all the names for our records because we know how important our history is to us. But it just simply says, my gift is being get dedicated in memory of Right, and it has two lines. Y'all be mindful of that. Two lines, y'all. Y'all got it. Two mine. Amen. Not 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. All right. Well, it's two lines, and so, and it has just a few lines for reflection. And so we share that because we want to be mindful. Um, we want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to share uh, those reflections as well, and we try to keep it to about. Uh, no more than about 30 seconds to be able to share, but we want to call out the names of our ancestors. That's something that um, we find important to us as we continue to keep their names and their legacies alive. And so please see uh, your ushers if you need more information about that. 
I want you to look in your bulletins and find more information about what the women's ministry is doing. We're so excited about their missionary efforts. And so they're looking at doing some things. And so please check your bulletins for that. I will not go into a whole lot of detail on this Sunday, considering that the hour is already late. But I do want to mention a couple of things. First of all, I want to thank all of you that have uh, participated on this past week in helping to make our call to action uh, Canada's Forum a success. It was a huge success. Can you give yourselves a round of applause? Amen. Um, amen. We're so grateful for all of those who put forth extra effort we had right here in this sanctuary, amen, candidates who are running for offices all over Shelby County, and we had the time, we took the time to ask questions, along with our other Tennessee progressive churches, amen, to ask questions to the district attorney candidates um, as to, to get to know them, amen. We were able to stream that event. We were able to get that information out into the community because we want to continue to make sure we're informed about what's happening in the life of our city. We are metropolitan and we believe that we're the city's church, amen. And so we took the time to get acquainted. And what we did is uh, not only just as a church, but also with our fellow Tennessee progressive churches is that we made a statement, right? We made a statement that says, if you want, right? If you want to try to get anything accomplished, right? If you want to run for office, if you want to make sure that you're making decisions that happen to impact our neighborhood, you may you need to make sure that Metropolitan and Tennessee Progressive are a part of the conversation. Amen. And so we had a healthy reminder of our candidates. We had a healthy reminder in our community to make sure that, hey, we are doing the work of making sure that extra effort wins for the building of our community. I'm so glad that you all were able to be a part of that. And I'm a very proud pastor and being able to share in that special experience with you all. So give yourselves a round of applause, amen. Yesterday, we gathered together here in our sanctuary on yes uh, to uh, 10 a.m. in order to have our mid-year church conference. We talked about a plethora of um, accomplishments that we've made so far throughout the year. We, we reviewed our goals, and we had people who were talking about all the things that we were proud that we were able to accomplish. Amen. And so now we talked about also in our meeting where we're planning to go. Amen. We talked about uh, our vision for 2023. We we talked about some things that you'll hear in the next few weeks. And we also mainly talked about the, the, just the, where the goodness of God and how far the Lord has brought us, right? We're excited as pastor and people to be moving forward. We are working on uh, several things, right? We're working on improving our facilities because we know that we are want to continue to be a beacon of hope and light here in our community. And so we're getting ready to move forward with some of our gym re gymnasium renovations with painting and upgrading those facilities, upgrading the technology there. Uh, we're look working throughout the rest of the church looking for opportunities to be able to beautify this beautiful building that we have been entrusted uh, to take care of. And so I'm excited about all the different things that are taking place. We're going to be looking for some help, y'all, right, on a couple of things with making sure some of the extra clutter that we have, amen, finds its itself to the right place. Amen, somebody. Amen, because we want to use every square inch of this place. But I don't want to talk to you all long this morning. I want to invite you to go ahead and stand. Amen. Continue to keep our sick and shutting in your prayers. Amen. Continue to keep uh, Sister Sydney Henning in your prayers. She was hospitalized on this week. We want to continue to keep her lifted. We want to keep the Reed family in our prayers as well. Um, and continue to keep one another uplifted. Amen. We are just believing that God has something special in store for us. Keep your first lady in your prayers this morning as she is in Oakland, Tennessee, preaching the word at Oakland Presbyterian Church. Amen. And so we're thankful as she's representing us. Amen man this morning, but I want to let you know, we're just so glad about what God is doing in our midst. Amen. I'm so glad to see Dr. Uh, Noel Hutchison and his wife, Rebecca. Amen. Here joining us. Amen. God bless you all. And to all of you who are gathered here in this place. So with that being said, let us look to the Lord. Amen. As we get ready to depart. And one request, Dr. Benefares, can you just take a picture with all of our young people today? 
amen as we get ready to go. So I want to invite all of our young people down after the service to take a picture uh, with our uh, president of Lemoyne Owen College, amen, so we can capture that in our church history, amen. Let us look to the Lord. Oh God, how we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. Oh God, you're so good to us. And we thank you, oh God, for helping us to sing a new song. And so now as we prepare to depart from this place, allow us to not depart from your sight. And so now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest willing and about with you all now henceforth and forevermore. May all of the children of God say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Have a fantastic week. Make sure to greet our visitors who are here with us today. Before we go, before we go, before we go, we have some anniversary announcements as well. We have some anniversary announcements as well. Just really quick. We want to just congratulate Deacon Melvin and Sandra Burgess, who on July 25th will celebrate 30 years of marriage. And then Deacon James and Barbara Hawkins on July 28th, this Thursday, will celebrate 59 years of, of their wedding anniversary. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Amen. Deacon Hawkins, I'm taking notes, okay? Amen. Let's get all our young people down so we can take a quick picture. Amen.